Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, the aviation industry in the Soviet Union was an important sector and a part of the industrial landscape, so much so, there was even a ministry of the aviation industry and the Soviet Union produced its own domestic aircraft in competition with Boeing and others around the world. I mean, names like Tupolev and Illusion were well-known names in the global aviation sector. But by the start of Perestroika in 1985, the Soviet Union had seen the formation of around 2,000 industrial enterprises around each aircraft plant, and there were about five or six of them. Now, these enterprises supplied all the necessary components and materials for assembling the final product, the aircraft, plus the production and supply of thousands of types of machine tools and other equipment to the workshops and divisions of each specific aircraft plant. Now, the vast majority of the supplied components, the machine tools, equipment, etc., were exclusively manufactured by the Soviet enterprises. There was very little participation of foreign manufacturers in Soviet times, as they just weren't available. You know, Cold War, etc. Now, in 1985, the USSR aviation industry produced 900 aircraft, and that was both aeroplanes, helicopters, and both military and civilian. Now, the USSR Ministry of the Aviation Industry was responsible for the management of the state orders and the distribution of the financial resources to around 10,000 USS enterprises in total. Now, it was a key entity within the Soviet Union's industrial landscape, and it served as the central coordinating body for the whole aviation sector in, in the Soviet Union. Now, the Ministry of Aviation Industry, however, was one of the first to be abolished when Perestroika started. As a result, thousands of enterprises in the USSR lost their state orders, state plans, and their financing. Now, they were forced to set out on their own. In other words, these unique enterprises were now required to independently identify potential customers for their products and resolve any issues in their supply chains. It's not as if that Boeing Airbus, if they didn't exist at the time, and other foreign aviation industrial giants were actually going to present them with any orders. Then, of course, the 1990s, we saw the significant decline of industry in Russia and the main successor state of the USSR, and many industries faced extinction. Now, in 2000, Russia produced six aircraft for civilian aviation and by then the entire Russian fleet had switched to Boeing Airbus and other imported products. Now as in any civilian production, imported names became established in electronics, the car market, tractors, combines, cosmetics, footwear, machine tools and other consumer goods. Now, the Russian civil aviation industry pretty much ceased to exist and much like the other civilian uh, manufacturing industry of the Russia. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. Now, this could be done by making a small donation, which you could do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. Now, while the Russian civil aviation industry ceased to exist, the advanced concepts and techniques developed by the Russian School of Aviation Design have remained. Plus, the design bureaus did continue to develop products for civilian aircraft after the, uh, in the most competitive, modern, and advanced way. In line with international standards, the team at the Sukhoi Design Bureau developed an advanced civil aviation design comprised with 80% important components which was launched in 2000 to 2002. The engines were developed in collaboration with the Seneca in French and uh, Boeing in the USA. The interior was by the Italian team and the control systems were created by German engineering. Now this pattern of external partnerships can continue throughout the project and the collaboration brought numerous new developments and ideas to the engineers at the Sukhoi Civil Aviation Design Bureau. However, in the end, Russia was only able to get to make and design the centre section, the wings, fuselage and assemble the plane, 
in the plant, which was not much different from a screwdriver assembly of Western cars at the factories in Kaluga or Kaliningrad. Now, this approach of exposed what the Russian aviation industry had become to the political and competitive pressures exerted by the Western industrialists. <clears throat> Ultimately, this is how the situation played out. Western businessmen and cooperators made Russia invest over $2 billion in the production and certification of the SS-100, the Superjet-100 aircraft, and Russia's expectation it was the commencement of mass deliveries of the aircraft to domestic airlines and countries around the world would give them a return on their investment. <coughs> Unfortunately, this didn't prove to be the case because as soon as the partners like Boeing and other identified the Russian airliner as a competitor, they withdrew from the project. Naturally, they used sanctions as the reason for this decision, but obviously uh, this caused serious problems and Sukhoi's total debt exceeded $2.6 billion in 2014, and that necessitated a 100 billion ruble injection from the state to stabilise the company. Now, following a major audit, it was revealed that the so-called civilization plan had been spending its funds ineffectively. Yeah, you know what I mean. Consequently, the initial purchases of the aircraft were given exceptional levels of discounts. I mean, Aeroflot purchased the SS-100 uh, at a price of $18.6 million per aircraft, which is well below the $34.5 million catalogue price. And the price was obviously influenced by the dominance of imported equipment in the market. In the wake of the scandal, Mikhail Prigozhin, who was the president of the US, and the driving force behind this particular plane, was uh, reassigned to be a position of rector at the Moscow Aviation University. Now, in essence, the SS-J-100 was effectively scrapped and it didn't continue to contribute to any point of revitalization of the Russian aviation industry. So that was pretty much it. Now, the MS-21, which is the Yak-242 project, a civilian medium-range airliner, was developed using a similar approach. It was a joint initiative of the Experimental Design Bureau, named after Yakolev, and the aviation complex named after Aleutian. Now, Russian aircraft designers, not having learned from before, also sought a way out by forming close cooperation with the world's leading manufacturers of aircraft components. Now, the future of the aircraft was settled with a, um, a PW1431G GM from Pratt & Whitney. The decision was made with entirely composite wings from American fiberglass and carbon fibre. That's despite the fact that they could have done that in Russia. Plans were also made to the avionics and about 30 other systems were all being imported from abroad. Even the glazing for the cockpit and passenger windows were going to be imported. Again, foreign partners made the strategic decision to withdraw from the project, citing sanctions again as the primary reason. As Russia were no longer a threat to boring Airbus on domestic or international routes. Now, it's important to highlight that the rejection to supply components resulted in the cessation of the production of the SSJ-100 and MS-21-300 aircraft, and these were already certified and ready for launch. Now, Russia is preparing to launch into a new series of production, the Superjet-100 and the MS-21-300. Now, these are new aircraft. They bear similar names and look similar in design to the previous ones, but that's all. The design and the preparation for the production of these completely import-substituted aircraft has had to be carried out from the ground up, with all the necessary design, testing and production procedures repeated and gone over again. Now, the actual process of creating the new All-100 uh, and the MS-21-310 aircraft really started back in 2017 when sanctions were really beginning to bite. Now, as an illustration, 36 systems had to be replaced on the MS-21-310, including the auxiliary power unit, engine, wing, fuel and hydraulic systems. Of these, 33 systems are still undergoing testing. Furthermore, the windows and the glazing of the cockpit, which are of domestic production, 
are yet to undergo the f full requisite testing. Now, the workload for the Superjet 100 is even more significant. The amount of work on the new aircraft includes not only the production of new drawings and the necessary testing of its assemblies, but also the organising of the production of these units and assemblies at Russian enterprises. Now, there's a still a significant amount of work to be done. And I'd like to reiterate that when you're making two completely new aircraft, the old Russian Superjet and the MS-1, we only started like what, eight years ago. In the global industry, the typical time frame for the creation of a new aircraft up to the first serial model is 12 to 15 years. So they're still in good time. Now, now it's anticipated that the full series of the Superjet 100 and the MC-21 310 will be available in 2029-2032. Now, in light of recent developments, it seems that Denis Manufarov and Andrei Bozjevsky, who's the head of the aviation industry, may have been slightly optimistic in their predictions regarding the timeline of the serial models, particularly uh, earlier. I mean, the anticipated commencement of serial deliveries of the Russian has been pushed back to next year. Now, that was well uh, anticipated. I mean, even 2026 is likely uh, to be a bit early, according to Sergei Chemezov, who's the head of the state corporation Rostec that oversees most of this. I think they will certainly be postponed until the end of 2026 uh, or maybe 2027. And that was quoted by TASS. Now, there's no mention was made of the Superjet 100, but the situation is further complicated by the Perm PDA engine didn't pass all the necessary tests, didn't meet the specific power output requirements, for example. So at present, there's no engine available for the serial Superjet aircraft unless they come up with it. Now, the PD-14 designed for the MS-21-310 is currently undergoing certification, but the launch of serial production in the required volume of 144 units per year it's still necessary, and that's not likely to be uh, for the 2029. So also, you're going to have to set aside at least 10% of the engines for the replacement and repair fund, and it's clear that the scheduled launch dates for Russian civilian airliners, the Superjet 100 and the MS-10, are going to have to be explained. I mean, as Rostex Chesovov, he says, 2026 was just far too optimistic. I mean, historically... Engines have re represented most civilian airline engines for Russian aircraft manufacturing, and it's unlikely that the productivity of the Perm aircraft engine plant will exceed the 30 to 50 Superjet and the uh, MS 310, uh, even by 2030. So, the Kazan aircraft plant, which is preparing to produce a series of 20 aircraft per year of the TU. Uh, 214 also face similar challenges. Now, the PS 90A engine, in addition to the 2U21, was also installed on the Ilion 96 and the military transport aircraft, um, the Aleutian 76. Now, UEC Per Motors is a sole supplier for engines for the entire Russian market. Plus, the modernization of the Kazan uh, plant's production facilities is scheduled for the completion. In by 2026. Now that time frame was confirmed by Denis Manturov during his visit to Kazan just before the BRICS summit. Uh, this is not really a cause of concern because the, the thing is the industry is back. The future growth of the air, uh, Russian aviation industry has just been outlined and it's just going to take a bit more time to complete it. Yes, they're making uh, plans and they're talking about timelines but that they've got to create uh, industrial development and serial production. I mean, n new Russian aircraft have been restored as all around in the various factories. And the Superjet 100 and the MS-21-310 were the first of their kind, paving the way for the revival of the Russian civil aviation industry. It's back to a new era of Russian aircraft manufacturing. So we can expect to see similar developments and other types of Russian aircraft in the future. So Russia's industry, aviation industry, is back. It's rising like a phoenix from the ashes and going to establish itself in the next decade, uh, certainly, uh, as a major player. But as it stands, 
the old Ministry of the Aviation Industry has still got to be recreated. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Also share this video with your friends and if you want to help me just um, make a donation by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Also comments. Love to see your comments. Love to read your comments and I'll see you all again soon.